Dr. Thiz, Chapter L, The Dirac Equation. First, the review of spin. Let's look at the general linear group of n by n matrices over the complex field. These are matrices that are invertible. They have inverses, and a group definition is possible. The terminology general linear is applied because the matrices are linear operators. Here's a definition of a linear operator. Consider a matrix A, an n by n matrix, that operates here on a column vector U and a column vector V and alpha and beta are scalars. Or you can think more abstract. A is an operator, U is a state, where when you operate on that state, you get back another state. So here we're going to consider this as a column vector. A matrix, n by n matrix, works on this n column vector, and you get an n column vector back. Well, when the operator distributes in, where you can move it in through the alpha, since alpha is just a number, and have it operate on u, and then add it to it operating on v, where beta can move right to the left, when you can do this, the operator A is called a linear operator. So our matrices, n by n matrices, are linear operators. So therefore, the word linear is used in the uh, nomenclature to describe the group. Since alpha and beta are scalars, and these scalars are real or complex, they're continuous, the group is said to be a Lie group. A Lie group has this property. The Lie group doesn't have to be an n by n matrix. A Lie group's more general, but they have the property that there is this continuity. Let's look at matrix groups that are Lie groups here. Nice uh, cases, a GLN first. And if we make the condition that the inverse must be the Hermitian conjugate, we get the UN group. And then if we make the condition in addition to that, that the determinant has to be 1, that's the special unitary n group. And notice that the group that we looked at earlier in our course, when we rotated x and y to x prime and y prime, that 2 by 2 matrix with real entries is the special orthogonal group SO2. And the orthogonal condition is that if you consider the rows and columns, in the matrix, each row as a vector and dot one row with another and get zero, they're perpendicular to each other, it's thought of as vectors, that's called orthogonal, that condition, and you can do it with the rows and the columns. Well, we studied in detail SU2, and we saw that the SU2 matrix, the general matrix, could be written as a combination, linear combination of the identity matrix plus the three poly matrices, and the three poly matrices have this neat commutation result. Now this kind of uh, uh, commutation result is characteristic of Lie groups. Lie groups will have this kind of uh, related algebra and this is called the Lie algebra when these related uh, matrices here, when you pick two of them and you get a linear combination of the others. Now here we just get the third one. If it's one, two, we get a third one back. But in general, you can think of this as a sum of coefficients F, J, K, L, and a matrix uh, L here coming from uh, the pool of operators, a special group. And the F, J, K, Ls, they're the structure, uh, called structure uh, constants there. And you're summing over the L, the L. So the J and K will, you know, give you an F, J, K, but then the L gets summed over one, two, three, or how many of these you have. In SU2, you have three of them, the poly matrices. So this is a Lie algebra that goes with uh, the group, associated with the group. And here, uh, this is a Lie algebra that goes with the rotation group, SO3, and we arrived at this by considering R cross P, the angular momentum operator, and the x, y, and z components of the angular momentum have this nice property, uh, which is uh, the Lie group and the associated group. Uh, this is the Lie algebra and the associated Lie group, those SO3. So think of this as Lie algebra, Lie algebra, and there's a group that goes with this, SO3, and a group that goes with this, this is SU2. Now I can make these Lie algebras identical if I divide 
this equation here by 2, both sides, and leave that 2 alone there, so the 2 goes under that segment and the 2 goes under this segment, then divide by 2 again, in other words bring this 2 over for that segment, so you have a 2 under each segment, and then put an h bar next to each of the sigmas, and I have to then put an additional h bar here, because I have to have h bar squared on the left, h bar squared on the right, and then I have made uh, this Lie algebra identical, but the operators, the group of uh, symbols here, make it S, capital S sub J. So S sub J comma S sub K is then going to be the same Lie algebra here where you just replace the L's with the S's. Now this is very, very profound theoretical physics here because what we're being taught here through the mathematics is that these operators here behave like angular momentum but there's no orbit. There's no orbital stuff here. See up here you had r cross p, you had orbital angular momentum. This must be another kind of angular momentum, a new kind, an intrinsic angular momentum that deals with those spinners. And the electron spin was measured, this was discovered uh, before uh, the you know Pauli matrices they were actually uh, looked at to try to explain what was discovered experimentally where the spin of the electron was in units of h bar h bar over two a half you know half h bar either one direction or a, you know a plus or a minus so you not only get the idea of an intrinsic angular momentum you actually get the quantum number here the h bar over two that's coming out also amazing so when we go to uh, the Schrodinger equation and make it uh, such that we can upgrade it to the Pauli equa equation we basically put in uh, for the wave function we put in spinners. So here we have the Schrodinger equation in one dimension and if the potential does not depend on a time you then have the, just a function of time for the potential and the time dependency is e to the minus i omega t where you take the psi star psi this will go away because you have a e to the plus i omega t times e to the minus i omega t like get one and you'll have a probability distribution which is independent of time. So here we go with the two uh, uh, components here, the upper component, lower component for the spinner, and these would be functions of x, psi 1, and psi 2. And since these are spinners, the uh, operator here can be thought of in general as is a matrix. So the potential energy operator has four components, although since it's a Hermitian operator because it's a measurable, potential energy is a measurable quantity, then if you take the uh, transpose and start, you'll get the same thing back, which uh, gives, a, gives some conditions on that potential energy matrix. Here I have written explicitly the identity matrix so you can see a matrix and a matrix in the matrix equation. We'll see that Dirac will show us that we don't have to put in spin by hand. Spin will come out naturally when we make the condition that Einstein's special relativity principles must be satisfied in the quantum world.